Hello and welcome everybody to Get Real with Deb and Dana. And Dana is here, really. She's I am here. Looking at something. I was looking at something. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to not being on screen right away. <laughs> I know. And I'm used to, you know, having somebody else do that intro. So I didn't, we didn't even have an intro tonight. That's but okay. We've we're got really cool excited. <laughs> yeah, we have some we are. really cool people with us tonight. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, we have the coolest guys, the coolest people Definitely in the field. People that have been around and know their stuff, which is right. what I, I like about both yeah. of them. So, and you know, there's a big, there's a lot going on right now with, um, you know, some of the newbies and things like that. And then the people who have been here like forever and our guests are two of those people. One definitely mm -hmm. um, has been here for a very long time. And before him was his family who kind of kicked everything off. So, yep. you know, I'm going to kind of, I don't even think this man needs an introduction, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's known as the godfather of the paranormal. Very yep. loved. I can't read my notes because I'm old and I was running out of age. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you that um, his aunt and uncle, Ed and Lorraine Warren, really are the founders of the whole paranormal um, awakening, people being more, it, it's always been around, you know, ghost hunting, investigating, mm -hmm. um, but they really started it all. So uh, he started working with them, I believe, he will he can tell us for sure, but I think he was either 16 or 17, yep. very young. So we're just going to go ahead and bring in the very Yay. awesome, amazing John Zephis. Hey, hey how you John. two doing? I can hear them screaming from here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Can you hear us? I can hear uh -oh. you. Yep. you. There you are. Okay. You got it, Deb? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I if I disappear, I might turn into a ghost, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the thought of that, John. No, you're not allowed to go anywhere here right now. You know, when <laughs> when we become ghosts and can work together on the other side, we're gonna, you know, do some really nobody'll have a doubt about the paranormal anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh no, with this whole with the, with this whole crew that we all hang around with when we're over there, we'll cause too much trouble. Oh, yeah. And get away <laughs> with it. <laughs> so how old were you when you started working with Uncle Ed and Aunt Lorraine? Hung, I used to hang around with them a lot when I was in my teens. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I was about 17, 18 when I really started doing stuff with them. But, you know, prior to that, you know, a lot of times my mom would cook dishes uh, uh, my mom was Ed's twin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and they only lived 20 minutes North of us. And she was like, take this up to my brother, take this up to my, and he'd go, come on, we're going here. We're going there. And I would jump in the car with them. <laughs> you know, and the funny thing back then was too, it was, you know, with them, you didn't know if you were going to come back that night or, or a day or two later. You just <laughs> never knew. <laughs> and you know, my mother used to freak out and go, you know, she'd get all nervous and go, I, I don't like it when you don't come back home like that. And I go, well, I'm out with them chasing ghosts. I don't know. We're looking for something. But anyways, <laughs> they would do their little jaunts, do these little things. And, you know, I was fortunate enough sometimes to be able to go along with them. Then when, you know, when I got older, they would go to, you know, different types of clearings and deliverances and exorcisms. And he'd say, come on, come see it, check it out. And, we're, I really wasn't involved, involved, but I would, you know, but it really opened things up for me because then it made me start to think and, you know, you, you get to see a rabbi do this, you get to see Native American do it, priest, you know, it's amazing to watch all the different perspectives and it helps you, I think, to be able to form a good opinion on how to look at things and how to understand things. Because, you know, a lot of times people say, well, John, you're Roman Catholic. I go, yes, but not everybody in the world is. A lot of people aren't. So, <clears throat> again, with, you know, getting exposed to all that stuff, and I go, you know, and people laugh at me, 
Uh, Deb, you hear me talk about this all the time. I got more witchy friends and pagan friends than you know, I do actually <laughs> religious friends. So, again, I, I base things with people on people. Yeah. And, you know, that that's all I care about. Religion or anything of that nature means nothing to me whatsoever. My friendships get based on, you know, us being friends, being able to talk mm-hmm. to each other, say what we could say to each other. You could go a whole year without talking to somebody. Then you run into them and it's just like, you know, the last time you talked to them was just the other day. Right. Right. To me, those are friendships. Those, those yeah. are things that, you know, they're there. They're permanent. They don't go away. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's what I base everything on. But anyways, getting to see all that in um, uh, just watching it and people say, what did you ever find the most interesting out of everything. Believe it or not, is watching Native American, watching rabbis. uh, I I mean, they go in there and they're like bulls in a china shop and they're very successful with the rights and with the different things that they do and very successful with the clearings. So that makes you, you know, take that step back and they're going, well, but you do everything from a Roman Catholic perspective. I'm Roman Catholic and that's what I go by, right. but I get involved with everything else out there. So I guess you could say, I don't know, Deb, I guess I'm one of those gray people. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, you are from someplace else sometimes. <laughs> that's, you know, that's good. That's what I love about you. <laughs> but you, so when you, when you go in somewhere and you're going to do some work, They've had experiences, they've had problems, and you're thinking, okay, something needs to be done here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a cleansing needs to be done. If you feel, and I know you feel a lot, even if you say you don't, um, (laughs) (laughs) if you feel it was more Native American, are you going to call someone else in to do that work? To help out? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's something... Um, it's an important element. Okay, good example with Native American. I was up north, right near the border on a campus, working, you know, doing a lecture and everything like that. Got this family had moved off the reservation, uh, and so nas- naturally they got, you know, shunned or isolated, whatever you want to call it. And you know, um, they were having issues, but they were still practicing their belief system and everything. So at that point in time, we got talking and everything. And I was very fortunate that night at the uh, at my lecture, there were elders, you know, from the community that were there. So we got talking and everything. And I was able to help repair some of the relationship with them because the elders came in to help them out. The younger ones took the step back and they were like, OK, I guess we need to look at things a little bit differently. And at that point, the elders were able to take over and, you know, being able to help them, the shamans, elders, like, you know, same right. thing, you know. So anyways, you know, that's my one of my uh, major uh, uh, things I talk about. And one of the uh, elders and the shaman had given me a medicine bag for protection. And I was telling to uh, the gentleman that I became good friends with out in uh, – the Navajo area out there when I was doing a convention out there. And I said, yeah, another time I was doing something, I was giving a peace pipe. They were like, what? White, they don't give white men that stuff. They go, they sure you don't got native. I said, dude, I can have all kinds of stuff for me and I wouldn't even know it. So, <laughs> so I thought, I thought it was pretty cool when it came into, you know, dealing with some of that and, um, with the old traditions, the old belief systems, watching some of the old rituals and the things that I'm very, very fascinated with all that. Right. Very. Yeah. And it worked and it still works today. It, A lot yes, of it these, does. The ancient yeah. ways yeah. are, you know, I'm happy to see them coming back mm-hmm. and being our age because we're, you know, a little older we kind of came from some of that and then back yeah. into it. So, yeah. you know. Well, Deb, I laugh at that, be- isn't it? Because people you know, they'll say, you know a lot about a lot of different things. I said, being involved with the paranormal, the amount of time I have been for over 50 years, I better know something. Yeah. Right. So, 
you know, I grew up in the seventies. We were flower children. You know, we got involved with all kinds of things. You know, I remember uh, joining up with the spiritualist to learn mm -hmm. and understand spiritualism. Mm -hmm. So again, that uh, people go, you, and they go, <laughs> Oh, it was the greatest. It was the greatest experience. I learned so much. And right. I took, took a lot away from the spiritualism and how they believe in it and what they do. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's, it's, but people get amazed when I start talking about that, that, you know, I got involved with all that stuff. I go, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to swim in a lot of different ponds to figure out what the ocean's all about. I think. <laughs> That's a then, good get way scared. To That's a, yeah, then you get scared when you get Thank in the you. ocean. you. It just came out that way. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah. The ocean's often good. Very but true. Yeah, it, true. it's all kind of intertwined. Yeah. And, and that's the cool thing that you've always been open enough. And you had, you know, you had amazing role models, your whole family, I think. I, you know, that's what I always find amazing is the fact that everybody stereotypes the both of them as these quote unquote strict Roman Catholics. Well, I, you know, they practiced it. They believed in it. They were, you know, from that generation that stood by it. But mm -hmm. there were many things that I got exposed to due to them, you know, uh, right. being around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, being around the pagans, being around the witches, being yeah. around, you know, so many different people. And then, you know, I'd always take that in and go, you know, when they portray them and everything, they don't ever bring any of those aspects out about the different people they've worked with and the different, you know, things they got involved with. So, mm -hmm. But that, that to me is an important element when you get involved with the uh, supernatural is yeah. all those different things. I don't know. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't work with them and get exposed to all that. Cause back in the seventies and eighties, this was all taboo. You didn't. Oh, yeah. You didn't talk right. about it. You yep. didn't bring it to the forefront. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, my and the childhood running is eighties, the eighties yeah. even. No, my dad was like, absolutely, you will not tell people that you are doing this. Yeah, right. Be yeah, pitchforks and torches in the front yard. <laughs> oh yeah, because, you know, mm -hmm. I was fifteen and yeah, so. Yeah. They're, they're different. I always laugh because with the girls, I couldn't, my two uh, daughters, uh, I don't talk about it, don't say anything. I'm afraid our friends won't be able to come over, blah, 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 blah. My right. son comes along, you know, he's 10 years younger than them, and I'm the coolest dad on the freaking block. After <laughs> <laughs> That's how much we've opened up and changed. So It has, yeah. big yeah. time, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a whole different ball yeah. game. And you have a great relationship with your kids and your kids have been involved. Well, I know Amy and Chris anyways, have been involved with the haunting collector and, and some of the work that you do and have come to Michigan Paracon with you Yeah, yeah. And, and they're open and loving and just wonderful people. Well, that here's the funniest thing. My oldest daughter, Erin, she's a, a that I, I call her my flower child. You know, kumbaya, <laughs> nothing's wrong, everything. You know, nothing. She doesn't get involved with the paranormal. Just wants to float around and everything. She's got three daughters, and they're so freaking big into the paranormal. It's not even funny. Oh no! So when we get together, we're sitting there talking, and my granddaughters will be running this off, running that off, and I'll look at my daughter because she would never want to get involved with any of it, and I go. <laughs> See, I said, uh, I said, your kids know more than you do about your father. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's great. So she tried to avoid it, but I, I, kids, that's what I told her. I said, her. Yeah. When your dad is John Zaffis, I don't, <laughs> I don't think avoiding it's probably easy. Right. Well, she did pretty well, but then the kids come along, you know, the grandkids and yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. done pretty. She's done pretty good. The only the only one funny story about my oldest daughter Erin is back uh, when she was little. That's when the haunting in Connecticut was going on. Okay. So it was on TV and everything. Daddy, right. I want to see it. Daddy, I want to see it. And I kept saying she's too young. She's too young. I'm like, I don't know. Something's like that. So I said, All right, fine. You want to go see the house? I'll take you to go see the house. So she's in the. I brought her in the car. We pulled the front of the house. 
start screaming and crying. I don't want to go near that. I don't want to go in that house. And I was like, I knew this was going to, you know, I said to myself, even if she wanted to go in, I wasn't going to bring her in. I was going to, you know, distract her. But I was waiting to see what was going to happen because it just didn't add up right. Did not add up right. So did you eventually go in? No. No, we just were talking about it not that long ago. And I said to her, I said, do you remember that? I said, when I pulled up in front of the uh, Carmen and Al Snedeker's house and so they, she goes, I, dad, how am I supposed to forget that? She said, I can't believe you were going to let me go in. I said, I was not. I said, well, you wanted to go. <laughs> right. It's a right. scary movie. I'm, yeah, I haven't seen is. that one in a while. <laughs> just thinking right. about it right now. Like, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not a, a television person. I don't like television. I feel it's a waste of time. But I was probably one of your biggest fans on The Haunting Collector. Thank you. True. Partly Fair because I too. love to hear you say I am. And I'm not just telling you that because you're looking at me right now either. <laughs> we really were big fans. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't, your, it wasn't your typical ghost hunting show. Mm -mm. And, you know, knowing you... Um, you're so real. You're so down to earth and you say it like it is, you do it like it is. And you were the first person that I saw do the burst EVPs. That was cool. Mm -hmm. But the reason, one of the reasons I brought it up is I remember Amy being a little bit frightened <gasps> oh, for no, quite a been, while there. She still is. is she? And, and, yeah. She believes very strongly in it. Amy's a lot more sensitive than she ever admits to. Okay, but the the fact of it is, she we you know I have stuff I'd bring it home. She would be looking at it and stuff, and then she would ask me different things. And then she sometimes she'd come back, Dad. Do you know where that came from? Do you know this? Do you know? It was like I got the biggest kick out of it. So then it, this is before the show. So then I would go, Aim, well, look or Peanut, because I call her Peanut. I said, look at this, and she would look at it and go. Then she would sometimes go look them up and tell me different things about them, and I get the biggest kick out of that. So she did, she does do research. You know, yeah. On some of the stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was kind of her role on mm -hmm. the show. And it was, yeah. it was cute that. Doing the research. Yeah. 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 Cause she, uh, she does, she's not very big on doing the investigating or mm -hmm. getting in the middle of any of that. Nope. She yeah. just wants to tell you what happened there and yeah. exit. Yep. <laughs> right. Right. For sure. Um, and she's, she's an amazing person. And I agree that she is very sensitive. You know, I've only been with her a few times, um, a few different events, but uh, you pick up on that right away with her that she so just, get, let me get this straight. Everything. So she's very sensitive, but doesn't admit to that. Right. That oh, no, she needs no. somebody on the screen. <laughs> she <laughs> takes after her father a bit. <laughs> No, she'll she'll make you laugh and she'll go, I can pick up on that shit, you know. And you know, we'll all just sit there and start laughing at her. And she can. Yep. <laughs> oh, we have a ton of comments. You know, mm -hmm. I feel bad that I can't put them up. There's just too many. But you know, after the show, maybe you guys can read them. Um, lots of people them. are yeah. John might be able to see them. Can you see them, John? Yeah, I'm looking at a few of them okay. right now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. A lot of people saying hi to you. And yeah, hi back, you're, everybody. You're so yeah. loved. Yeah, and I know that you're you're one of the favorites at Michigan Paracon. Yep, in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. I, I, I don't that. think you. I was not there the very first year, but I've been there every year since then, and I don't think you've missed a year since. No. I've, well, I've been there. I'm grand. I'm grandfathered in. That's the running joke with that one. <laughs> right. Brad, Brad and Tim and all, all the all of them. I'll turn around and say, if we don't bring freaking the old man back, we're, we're going to get crucified for that. <laughs> yeah. So the running the running joke was back in the day when they first started. I would I two of the people that ran the casino to Native American people were you know, fans of mine and stuff and blah, 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 blah. And we would joke around and go back and forth. So I said to uh, Brad at one point, I said, I don't care whether he asked me to come back or not. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, <laughs> they already told me I'm grandfathered in. If I don't come back, you can't have your conference here. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's been a running joke for going on 14 years oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> and they love you. They just uh, absolutely love they're you. They're great. They're all great yeah. people. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I wonder now what happened to um, Looking for Mr. Shaw to pop yeah, in here any minute. I, I'm getting a little concerned because he hasn't sent me an SOS on. yet, like the other two. Yeah, time. right. So, and I did send him the link. So hopefully, maybe he's just um, running behind on his stuff. Yeah, because you know, the first time I met Mr. Tim Shaw, he was with John Zappas. Now I had met you a few years before that, but. It wasn't memorable to you, I'm sure, because I was just another groupie. Um, so our first fun experience was on the elevator when you and Tim were going up to dinner. I think that was in God, 2000. What was his first conference? 11, 12? Gosh, I don't know. Where 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 were we? Michigan Paracon. There he okay. is. Okay. Okay. Oh, there he okay. is. So I'm going to bring him in. We're not even going to. We're just going to keep talking about him. Listen, listen, is. listen. There he is. is. There he is. is. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see, I see a thorn between two roses here. What's going <laughs> on here? I'm Whoa. looking up there. I'm looking. What the hell? Jesus, Johnny. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that you're older than me because man, look at you. You look a lot older than me. What are you about? What? What? You know, three months older than me? <laughs> you old guy. Hey, ladies, how are you? Good to Welcome, see you. Welcome, Mister. Hello. Thank you. Hey, thank you for putting up. You, you guys all know I had the show before, so right, I wanted right. to jump yep, over yep. and 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 made sure I I made time for this because yeah, you guys are beautiful. And John, where else can I spend 28 hours with one person? And oh, share a sordid evening in the men's room in the Detroit airport. So, and have and have yeah. photographic proof to, to to share. You know, who else can I do that? <laughs> so all as, I can, as all as I remember from from that night was fucking dust. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is the Devin Dana show. Get real. With Devin Dana, you can say fuck all you want. <laughs> I want to be made clear that I am not involved in any of the You see what happens when I get together with Tim? You see what happens? This is, but anyway. this, is, this is exactly what happens. Oh this is this is exactly what there is. There is all all whole, all there's every all decorum goes right out the window yeah. when I'm with, with when I run into Johnny. Oh, See, this is why we can't be in the same place very often because oh, all hell Edward. breaks loose. <laughs> I, I remember at one point him and I were so tired we're hiding out in the men's room because of the tornadoes Tornado. and everything. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, what, what What else is left to happen? What else? Nothing. I mean, we're going to yeah, sleep on there. urinals. Well, I mean, what, what's left do we have a challenged? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, this, oh my God. It, it was, it was beyond. It was, be, that, that, that was, that was a, that was a trip that I just, like, I looked over. Let me tell you, ladies, I looked over at one time and I thought he was dead. I thought Johnny was dead. He's laying on the floor in the terminal. Hands across his mm. chest. I thought he was dead. I thought he was laid out. All he needed was like, a, you know, some flowers or a rosary, black roses like, or something. He was, he was, he was, he, he was dead. And then it's like, security comes up and goes, "You guys can't stay here. You guys got to go down into the tunnel between between concourses A and C." I looked at this guy going, can't we go into the men's room? There's no windows in there. He looks at me. I said, listen, we're two old farts. What the hell? We got our bladders are terrible. There's no bathroom down there. We're going to be coming up and down 20 times anyway. The guy just goes, do it. Do what the hell ever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you did. So true. Uh, that that that's going to be. I think that one will go down in the uh, the records there. Because what was there? I 30, so. 30 of us that got stranded that night. Yes. As all I remember is, if correct me if I'm wrong, 
Tim, your phone rang. It was Dustin. That's why I started talking about Dustin. Yep. And I jumped up off the floor. I go, he got a vehicle? Yeah. Where is he? And I grabbed my suitcase, threw, threw my shit in there, and I'm running. And I say, and I'm, I'm going crazy, right? I don't care where he is. I'm walking. I will find that car and get in it. <laughs> I, I said to Dustin, listen, Dustin goes, well, don't you want to go? I said, no, no. Let 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 Johnny go. I think he he needs he needs to go. I'll stay here. Don't worry about it. He needs to and go. And all of a sudden, he goes, okay, well, I'm at, I said, I, never mind. Don't even tell me. He's gone. I don't even know where he's gone. All I see is a puff of smoke. He was gone. He was just, he was gone. It was like magic. He was there one second. He was gone in two seconds. In seconds. Oh. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. And as long as I can remember, there was a couple of different times I woke up and I looked over at Dustin and I go, Will you slow down? Shut the F up, old man, and go back to sleep. Like, <laughs> he was joking. I mean, we all we always he, we always do that with each other when we do that. Yeah. But so again, it was just funny. Cause then I woke up at one point and I turned to look at him and I go, Dust. And he goes, Yeah. I saw as we need to be doing right now is going down a mountain in a blizzard. That happened to us one time when we got stranded. Oh. God. And we're coming down this big mountain in a blizzard, and it. I was just like, whoa! <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel! Jesus, <laughs> take the wheel! Literally. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, this is, you know what? I, 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 I'll tell you what. I think, now, I didn't even know how many, I know where we met, Johnny, but I can't remember how many years ago it was. That's a long time ago. It was. About 80, I, I think. And, as a matter of fact, did I have hair? No, I didn't have hair, but I had color in my beard. That's how that's how long ago. Yes, you did. Yes, you yeah, did. I did have yeah. We both actually we both had some color that, in our beards. Must yeah. have been a and while ago. It was longer than what we want to really remember that far back. But I always I always I always remember uh thinking to myself, oh my god, that's Johnny Zaffis. Oh my god, that's John Zaffis. He walks up to me, we start talking. Next thing I know, he says, so, Tim, how the fuck long have you been doing this stuff? I, went, I just swore at me. She just swore at me. And we've been friends ever since. Ever we've since. Been, ever since. I can hear him saying it, actually. Oh, oh, my God. Ever since. When he was on the show, here's a little unknown. Here's a little known fact. So when Johnny was on the show, Haunted Collector, I would be sitting there and I'd be working on something. And all of a sudden, my Skype would pop up, right? My Skype would come up, Johnny Zaffis. I always knew when Johnny was having a bad day because he would call me. It was like, it would just the, the words that would fly out of his mouth. And my wife would be walking by going, is that Johnny calling you? It must be Johnny. She knew immediately just by the words. It was funny. It was, it was, it was great. It was, you know what, Johnny? It's one of my fond memories of you <laughs> is when you used to call me. And then I would hear, you know what, Tim? You know what? This is what else happened. And then I would sit there and the tears would come down my face. We rolled down my face thinking, oh, my God, I don't know how he's doing it. You know. So Johnny is a true world warrior. Believe me. Anybody that even questions it. Believe me, Johnny is a true world warrior, man. Because he's got as little patient as he has. He has more than I have. <laughs> I have, the, but you know, the, I, cause I keep laughing about everything now because everybody, I guess I keep saying, I have cut back on, you know, being out on the road. Like I used to, I don't want to do it no more. I just don't, you know, so I, I do two, three things a month and I'm fine with that with the exception of October. So, you know, it's, um, it's a, a, a weird type thing because I, we actually, my wife and I were just talking about it. She says, I remember several years in a row, she said, September, up to Thanksgiving in November, you'd be on the road. I said, I remember those days yep. getting stranded here, traveling to that state, that state. Taping yeah. here, taping there. Yeah. I mean, I was, yeah. we, we both, we both were in the same boat with that. Now yeah. I'm like this. What do you mean? I, I can't sleep in my own bed tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah. You know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that sounds like fun. No. 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 Uh, how much? How much are you paying? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll sleep on somebody's couch if the price is right. <laughs> what am I saying? 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Tim, I think I think you're busier now than you were before you retired. Oh, oh he yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I remember the days of, you oh, know, we the, go, the we conversations. Go back to when I first, yeah, we go. You and I go back to the when I first when I first uh, uh, the first actually the first year that I, I worked the Michigan Paracon. What is that? Yes. Like? I don't even I can't remember how many years we were ago. just talking about that. I know right where we met. That's you, me, and Johnny met in a sorted elevator going see, up. He remembers up, it too. See, yeah, we're in an elevator together. You guys okay. in elevators, man. I don't know. Yeah, and <laughs> and I had a medicine bag on because I remember, you know, yep. you asked me about the medicine bag, and I didn't know. You know, I feel feel bad. That was the first year you were there. I didn't know who you were at that point. I didn't know who. But I, was I said at that something point. about, about? Um, <laughs> I said something about you. Uh, being a, a psycho psychic, not knowing that you were there as a psychic. As a psycho yeah, psychic. That's what I was there for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh yeah, we've been good friends since that moment. Since, in yeah. The yeah, we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've gone back a long way. And Dana. I just dropped out of the sky. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I used to I used to be I'd see her at Michigan. I remember always seeing you at Michigan. Uh -huh. And you'd be walking by and I'd be going. There's something about her, you know, <laughs> and it, it it wasn't like you know anything bad or anything, but it was just I like mean... something about her. And then mm -hmm. I realized that I mean, you were you know that 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 you were a reader and you were a psychic and 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 a medium, and it was like, oh, that makes sense. So I finally I, let me tell you something. I find oh, I just had a I just had a shadow person <laughs> dart out the other side of my wall oh, here. Nice. So I just started laughing. I I I remember. I can't remember when, but I finally got the nerve to walk up to Dana and say hi. I introduced myself. I think when you had something wrong with your foot, I can't remember. Yeah, that was that. That um, you were sitting over there, and I have plantar fasciitis that cropped yeah. up, and it got fixed by my friend who's a Reiki master. Even though at that point I didn't believe in Reiki all that much, because I'm a, a skeptic considering what I do. I was like, whatever, that's not going to work, and it did. I was out of the boot after six weeks the day after mm -hmm. she did. Yeah. Isn't that foot. amazing? It it's was. amazing. Mm -hmm. But I always remember, I, I finally got the nerve to talk to you. It's like, cause it's like, I, you know, it's, it's for as loquacious as I am, you know, Johnny, do you like that word? Do you like that word? I, I was just digesting no, it. Myself. Using words. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Now you're using words. Neither one of us understand. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I am kind of shy. And, you know, it's funny. I am kind of shy about you know meeting new you know people and walking up to them. And I, and I'm thinking to myself, she doesn't want to sit there and talk to me. You know, so yeah, it's like, I did. I was like, oh we my did, God. yeah, we we talked a little bit. And yeah, we've been friends ever since. We've done mm -hmm. a couple gigs together. And Deb, Dana actually saw me work. I did. Nice, nice. She saw the true insanity of what I do. It's I, true. Twice. <laughs> Really? It's definitely insane. And Johnny, Johnny spends too much time with me in airports, so he knows just how insane I am. <laughs> well, the four of us are here together, and I'm not so sure there's a lot of sanity in this whole room. Again. I have I have felt the ground moving a little bit. There's a little vibration coming up there. So I don't know if there's like an earthquake or what's what's going on right now. So it's all the vibration from the the, the insanity here. Or, yeah. or or John John's been eating those those navy beans again. I'm oh, not quite yeah. sure. <laughs> or Zaffis getting nailed in the corner up there. Just I love it. I love it. <laughs> He's used to it. I love it. Aren't take, take, it takes a be... lot to, to even phase me. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, considering your background, I can see how that would be. Right. Um I think we're supposed to be doing a little holiday stuff, aren't we? A little oh, bit. God. I don't you want know, anybody I, out there I yelling think at me. We are. <laughs> but you know what? We we do we have John and Tim here who yeah. can, you know, they've earned the right to, to exactly. do whatever they want. So on the first What's day of Christmas, <laughs> that was gave to me a demon in a tree. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Great. That's there it. We go. That's, we're, great. We're, that's your we're holiday. Back, thing. We're back on track, Deb. We're back on track. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about some spooky um, Christmas story? Has anything ever happened? Have you ever had anything around the holiday for either of you? I'll but let the old man, I'll let the old man speak first because he's you know he's I, 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 I respect my elders. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> you wait till next time we're streaming. I was going to you. say. <laughs> You're going to get it. There'll be some projectiles being fired. Three, he's three months older than me, so okay. He's my elder. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think when... I, with me, I'm weird with with the whole holiday thing. Anyways, with uh, uh, a lot of that, would uh, I think when we started putting up the remembrance tree, it's this little white tree that belonged to my mother in law, and after she passed away, my wife wanted it, and she started putting a few of the ornaments from you know my mother in law and stuff on it. And then I started putting some of the ornaments from us, so I, we ended up calling it you know, the memorial remembrance tree with, you know, all the dead people's Ooh. ornaments on it. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, my, hu- yeah, they're, they're used to my humor. So, you know, and I'll put the ornaments on everything and I make some of my sarcastic remarks or something, you know, this ornament, you know, was from my mother-in-law, she a pain in the ass and blah, blah, blah. And I'll put it on the tree and I'll put this one out. Oh, that was from my sister, you know, what a pain in the ass she was and blah, blah, blah. Cheryl just sit there and she, she goes, you know, you're unbelievable. She goes, I don't know how they don't all haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, at one point in time, uh, um, two I think it was two years ago or three years, two, give or take. I'm sorry. I can't remember. My stepmother-in-law had passed away and there was a couple of birds. She used to put birds all over the place. So the Christmas ornament birds that you clip on, mm-hmm. you know, the ones I'm talking about, right? Yeah. She had tons of them. And Sharon and I liked some of them. So we were putting some of them on. So smart ass me was hanging the birds upside down and doing this. I used to call her Mama Mary. That was what, how I would refer to her. I go, Mama Mary, look, I'm hanging your birds upside down. I'm telling you, that whole tree shook. That whole thing was shaking. That was typical for her where she would cop an attitude. And Cheryl, I remember Cheryl looking at me. I'm looking at her. And I go, well, she just got pissed off at me. I, just did that. I mean, that's about the craziest I could think of when, when it comes for, I mean, I got a couple of haunted uh, items from Christmas. A Santa that somebody picked up and they swore it down. The thing was haunted. I have it here in the museum. I've never had any activity or anything around it that I'm aware of. So. Interesting. No weird ho-ho-hos or anything? Nothing like that? <laughs> I knew a couple of weird ho-ho-hos, but that's, I wasn't that's gonna story. Say, I knew, I knew, I knew gonna with these that. two. I knew it. <laughs> I am setting myself up over and over yes. again. It's not normal yes. for me. Yes. <laughs> Usually oh. ahead of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know what? It, it, I, I, we've had a couple. And and I'm going to be honest with you. My wife, Nancy, uh, her family, they had, there was a lot of folk magic. I won't say witchcraft because, you know, a lot of times with traditions, they're all Roman Catholic or they're Orthodox, Greek Catholic or whatever. And they, uh, uh, they have uh, traditions and different things that happen. And, uh, but if you ever called them a witch, they'd beat you with their broom, you know? So you don't want to, you you'd never want to go and you never want to say that. So there's been, her family's got a lot of stuff. Her family's got a lot of stuff. But the one time I, I will tell you in our old house, we had a dining room. It was an addition onto the house. It was a small house and an addition onto the house. And, uh, we had our dining room in this addition and we had a big, nice big window in the back. And we always had a bird feeder there. And, uh, you know, you know, at at Christmas time, you know, you know, we'd have both sides at the house, you know, the in-laws and all that. And, um, after my father passed away, he was the first of the parent, the parental units to go after he passed away, we started noticing every Christmas we would have a, uh, a dove that would come every christmas eve and we used to go and we would you know spend our time we would we would actually go to like you know their house sometimes christmas eve or they would be at our house and we started seeing a dove but what was unique about the dove is the dove had the bluest eyes the most clearest glowing bluest eyes i've ever seen on a dove my father had these unbelievable blue eyes i would kill for those blue eyes, you know, I have, I have a green one and I have one that's like off blue, you know, with the one with all the surgery I've had in it. So, uh, but the eyes, eyes were so blue and so clear and this dove would come and you would never see the dove at any other time. He would come visit once a year 
and until I believe uh, probably when uh, I'm just trying to think when just before my mother-in-law passed, because my father-in-law had passed and my mom had passed, of course. So when the last of the in-laws had passed, he stopped. I never, I, we, he stopped coming and that was always neat. And uh, my wife's aunt Christmas Eve, someone would always come and ring the doorbell and there was never anybody there. I always remember that. Cause as a matter of fact, we spent a Christmas Eve at her, uh, at her aunt's house and the doorbell rang. Hmm. Nobody there, nobody there. So, I mean, there's, there's been a couple, you know, little things like that, that happened. And it's, and I think, I think what's nice about it is the fact that, uh, it's sort of like that, you know, the remembrance it's the, you know, it's like everybody, when you set a plate, an extra plate for right. the people that are gone, the, the empty mm -hmm. chair type thing, uh, that kind of reinforces the fact that people aren't gone. They're here. They're just in a different, you know, different state, you know, different way of being. And, and they, and they come back in visitation to, to say hi. And I really think that that's, those are, those are instances that kind of allow us to understand that we're not alone, you know, cause so many people feel, especially during the holidays, it's tough. I, I, you know, I feel bad for people that really, they feel so lonesome and so alone, alone uh, during the holiday season. And yeah, we can be alone, but we're not alone because, you know, whether or not it's like people are there with us, we're never alone because we have all our loved ones and our families that are still here. And, mm -hmm. and if you look, I guess if you look closely and you start observing and Johnny, will tell you the same thing. The only difference between mediums and everybody else is that we kind of watch a little bit, you know, we see things a little bit differently. We see things a little bit clearer, you know, Johnny. And I, I think Johnny's the one that told me that. And, you know, my wife and I've been finding dimes in the strangest places all over the house, you know, since we moved into the new house. And I would say the last couple of months, some strange stuff, you know, some, some dimes, you know, been found here and there. And, uh, especially in November, cause October, November, everybody died basically, except for my mother-in-law that held on to February. Damn it. You know, we, so we can't, we can, so we can't, so, so we can't, yeah, we can, we can't have the whole, you know, you know, fall death thing, you know, but, uh, <laughs> You know, I find I, I do find that it's it's kind of unique because there's just so many little tiny things that my wife and I actually uh, we actually see and my and uh, uh, you know uh, f like different friends of mine will come up and say you know Tim I had this dream uh, so and so who's been dead for a thousand years came to talk to me and it's always at this time of year uh, it's almost never like during the you know I get all the haunted stuff like. January through through like you know early November, it seems like from like no like mid November through December and even like into January first, people come up and they have these dreams where they actually are talking with their relatives. And I always say to them, "Listen, you know if it feels like you talk to them, you did, and that's the way it works." Mm -hmm. And I just, as a matter of fact, I just had somebody come up and tell me that the other day uh, at, a, at a at a little uh, talk I was doing. So. You know, the, the Christmas is is tough. And you know, the other thing that I love about Christmas is, guys, you guys know how, <laughs> as you can tell, the Vic, how I, I like to like the Victorian stuff. I mean, I don't need this. This is this is not even all the death stuff. The death stuff's on the other side of the of, of my <laughs> laptop here. And uh, I love the Victorian age because uh, they had a reverence mm -hmm. for those that have gone, and they had a, a whole protocol and uh, at at, at Christmas time, you know, they would, they would talk about scary stories, but they would also talk about family stories and they would also talk about, you know, uh, what happens after death. And it not, wasn't always like so grim as it's projected on TV, even though it was a grim time, it was still something that people tried attempted to be joyous. And I think that's another reason why I'm like, so enthralled with it. So Christmas to me, I don't care. My wife and I really don't carry on a lot of traditions about Christmas. Uh, although she does have her five Christmas trees up, which is, and, and, and the house, and I've seen pictures of Johnny's house. 
Oh my gosh. Let, let me just tell you something. <laughs> I would, Johnny, I'm coming up there one Christmas and I'm bringing a tour bus of people to come through your house <laughs> just for Christmas because it is I like, want to go. It, it, it is like, it is like mini Frankenmuth, Michigan, you know, the Christmas wow. capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. And my wife is, my wife is trying hard to beat you, Johnny. I'm just telling you that my <laughs> wife is trying so hard to beat you because the entire, you know, we live now in a, in a large, uh, in a large ranch house. So there's five Christmas trees. The dog had six Christmas trees because the dog has a Christmas tree. Oh, no. And I mean, it is like Santa dropped its bag on the chimney and it exploded <laughs> Christmas in my house. So it's that, that I love that, but she has, she's the one actually that has all the different traditions and she has a lot of the Polish traditions that we still do. And uh, I think it's really important that we carry on these traditions but I think it's important for her to have them because of her lineage, you know, because there were so there was there's so much within their within her own uh, uh, traditions and right. how they did things for years and years and years. And I think it's I think I personally think it's great. And she's she's like this this is this is my this is this is typical Nancy. Yeah, I know I'm psychic. So what? I don't care. I'm not doing anything with it. Good enough. And she does more with it than you ever want to know. So I think a lot of it is her mom comes through. I think a lot of it, you know, that, that uh, uh, you know, that they just have that such a joy at this time of year. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm like collateral damage when it comes to Christmas. So when she's upstairs working, I come down into the basement here and, Talk to the shrunken head. I was going to say. <laughs> New boards and all the fun stuff, right? You got to, yeah. And yeah. and as a matter of fact, I was just, I was doing a, I was doing a, uh, a board session the other day. And Zozo comes through, right? Yeah, whatever. You know, you know me and Zozo. It's like, yeah, okay, we're buds, you know. I said, Zozo, by the way, have a great Yule. And it goes, Thanks. <laughs> it's spelled out. Thanks. I started laughing. I said, That's the greatest thing in the world. Sozo said, Thank you for, for having a happy you. So, Sozo's not that bad of a guy. <laughs> so, so, you literally use, do you have certain boards that you use or do you use all of them? I know you have I use I use every antique board I have. Every antique board I have. I love every antique board. Uh, I'm starting to get rid of some boards. If people like want them that I know that will respect them, they want them for a display or whatever, or they want to use them. I, I, you know, the more modern ones, I don't think twice about parting with. Uh, a lot of times I'll have them out because Johnny knows I'm always after him. Johnny, here, sign this board for me. This Johnny, sign this board. It's going to charity. Sign. Uh -huh. One of these days I should just, Johnny, I'm just, I swear to God, I'm going to bring 20 boards. So you just sign them all at once. You don't have to worry about signing them again. <laughs> no problem, bud. But what I, what I do with them is I go and I, I, I give them the people to raffle off for charity mm -hmm. to raise money, you nice. know? So, I mean, it's like, you know, because I think it's something special. And a lot of times the boards are given to me or sent to me. And, there's nothing really on them. They're not possessed or anything, you know, and uh, there's, there's no attachments with them and they're just boards. They're just, you know, what they are and there's no planches or whatever. So I want to give them a different life, you know, cause I feel that they, you know, the, the boards are tools of communication. So I want to give them a little bit of a different life. So I want to be able to, you know, instead of everybody being afraid of the boards, I want to be able to have, bring these boards out and, and let people enjoy them and let them, uh, you know, have a higher purpose, you know, and that's what I think is, is fun about. Now I wouldn't part, I wouldn't part with any of my haunted stuff, but <laughs> you know, that, that, no, that, that stays there. You know, it's like Johnny, it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want other people catching this stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, the boards for the most part, I mean, I have a couple that have a, a couple things to it, you know, that I wouldn't, you know, give that to anybody, but the rest, you know, just the run of the mill boards I have like, I think last count, I think I got 85 boards now. Oh my. And that's giving that's just been giving some away too. So uh Jeez. yeah, I think I got 85. I think I just got the the last one I just got. I I rescued it out of a out of a thrift store for like four dollars. Nice. You never know. Love it. You know. So do, do you, you have the have... Barbie one? The what the Barbie, Barbie one? Barbie. There's a Barbie one. I don't have the Barbie one, but I do have the pink one. 
I have the the girl slumber party that comes in the purse. Oh dear, really? <laughs> Didn't know there was that. such an animal. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I do have that one, and uh, cool. I do have some pink ones, and a friend of mine's daughter, who is sixteen, I believe. Mm -hmm. I told her on her eighteenth birthday, I'm going to give her a pink Ouija board, <laughs> and because she. She loves all the oddities and she'll go mm -hmm. with us, my wife and I, to different, you know, the different shows or whatever. And uh, so I said, when you're old enough, I'll show you how it works mm -hmm. and I'll give you one. But not until then. So she's she's anxiously awaiting she's one of my boys. 18. <laughs> yeah. She's 16 yeah. going on 45. Let me just tell you. <laughs> That's another story. True. So while we're on boards, Johnny, do you ever use boards? Have you ever had boards like in the mu in the haunted museum? Have have there, you had to take boards out? I've never uh, from cases, yeah. But my theory is almost the same thing with Tim. It's not necessarily the board, but sometimes removing it helps them to be able to move forward. So thus, I believe we should do that now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this with you because I think it's one of the coolest stories. Bob Merch. I'm very good oh, friends with Bobby. Love Bobby. Right? Love that guy. Such a nice the very, guy. The very first time he was doing a presentation on the history of Ouija, I wanted to go sit in and listen to it. Yeah. So I waited to everything. Everybody was in and I stuck around and I sat down on the side and He's going back, he's talking and he's looking and he started stuttering, going back and forth and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is wrong with, you know, I knew him, but I didn't know him that well, right? <laughs> so I'm just looking and everything like that. And he goes, I apologize. He said, I never thought I would see John Zaffis come in and listen to me doing a presentation. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't want to mess the poor guy, you know. So anyways... He did it and went through the whole thing. And then afterwards, we were at the bar and everything. And I go, dude, that was freaking dynamite. I said, you did such a good job on that. I said, the history, the information and everything. And he goes, I never thought I'd hear John Zaffa say that. And I'm looking, I'm going to go, why? He goes, well, you're so again." I said, when did you ever hear me actually say that? I said, have you ever heard <clears throat> me say that? I always refer to it as a tool. And that's what it's used, just like everything else. It's a tool. So thus, I said, you know, I said, don't blame me for the Roman Catholic Church turning into a demon. I said, they're the ones that actually it happens. did that. It happens. It happens. <laughs> but anyhow, I again, and I was very fortunate, went to the very first uh, Ouija board conference they ever had down. I, where was that? Maryland, Baltimore. I that was Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore, yeah. That's where the fold I, company was that yeah. produced them. Yeah. So I was, you know, very honored to be able there to be there and uh, participate in everything. But I, I still I don't use a lot of tools. I don't use a lot of things. Will right. I stand there? Will I watch somebody? Absolutely. Because I like to see what happens, what's going on. It's just just like with anything. I'll a lot of times just watch and observe and see what's going on and what's happening. So mm -hmm. well, if somebody's. uh playing Ouija or anything like that bother me huh? this, is, this, is my, me. this is my favorite John Zappa story uh oh many years ago when I first oh no I remember when I first met you it was it at was, the museum it was in Lilydale the, at the museum yeah but we were at the that's right it was at the museum that's yes right. it was at the museum down yeah. yeah that's right because I remember reading your book and going that's John Zaffis. <laughs> Holy shit. That's John Zaffis, right? <laughs> so uh later on, you know, he had a, he was speaking in the auditorium and I raised my hand with a question and he looked at me and he said, I knew there was someone in the audience that would go and do this. And I'm thinking, oh shit, I just went and I just like insulted John Zaffis with this question. But he was really cordial. <laughs> so we're at the we're we're out just outside the gate at the at the uh uh Leolin Hotel, which is just mm -hmm. outside the gate. So John's leading this ghost hunt. We're kind of going through the whole place, you know, and it was neat, you know, and it's a, and 
I was there and I said, you know what would be so cool is if we did table tipping. That mm-hmm. would be so cool. All of a sudden, this woman that worked there says, well, we got a table upstairs, right? So we go up there and nothing's really happening. And John was up there and John excuses himself, you know, because I know John by this time, his bladder was full, you know. He, he wasn't quite as old as he is now, but you, you know how it is, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So he, he disappears. Well, that friggin' table starts banging around and starts moving and you know we're all working on it. it's like holy crap john i hear all i hear is pop 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 as this, as he's running up the stairs the door opens up poof. it was like somebody oh, threw a wet blanket no. on him nothing Shit, happened that's true so he left <laughs> that table all four legs came off the ground i mean it was like whoa you know we're like one of these things you know when he left trying to room. keep up with it all of a sudden i hear boop, 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 boop. Door flies open. <laughs> Done. Oh Always God. remember that, Johnny. And that was that's still one of my. Fi- I think it happened like three times. By that time, I I was just like, "What do we try? What do we?" Let's, let's yeah, but don't you remember one one of the ladies turned and looked at me and said, "Stay out of here!" Oh Stay my out God! Yeah, like that. Whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, one of the old one of the old blue hairs up there. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Oh I remember yeah! Get out of here! Get out of here! She. Oh my one God! One of the old blue hairs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can. You know what? I can say that because I mean, I I went. You don't to, have I, hair. I well, I took I took my first that too, that too. Yeah, but that I took too. my first classes at Lyceum, the the Sunday school in like 1972. So I was a kid. So I, I they, they were blue hairs. They were probably younger than than to to us. They're always blue hairs. And I've always called I've always called the hierarchy of of Lily Dale and, and some of the. Some of the instructors just nothing more than blue hairs. So that's that just something. Q tips. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So it's like, you know, the blue hairs. But I remember that Johnny. I forgot about that. Oh, that oh, was that I, was a oh, good no. one. Oh, she. Oh, uh, uh-uh. she's ready to pick me up, tuck me under her arm, and throw me right out that front door. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. So, oh, do you god. have an explanation for that? What do you think? Why do you think that was happening? Different, you know what? After all the years of doing seance and stuff, I have found that it's like an energy bubble, and you get the right people yeah. to mm-hmm. work, it just works. It yeah. there's no, you know, it's just like energy. The right energy will make things work. Mm-hmm. And when you introduce different energy in, or energy like somebody leaves, they take that energy out. It changes the dynamics, and it changes that energy. We were just up at uh, Mansfield Reformatory, and uh, we were doing a recreation. A friend of mine is a retired corrections officer, and he began his he began his career at Sing Sing. So that'll give you an idea about this guy's. You know, he's crazy. So he's my buddy Frank, love him dearly. So he goes and we go and we have him handcuffed. Did the perk walk in front of like all these cells? Put him into a cell in isolation handcuffed and left the handcuffs on him he went nuts like just like they would do and he like later on he said they would they would be screaming and kicking the bars 24 7 you know oh and he kept going kept going and this reenactment got so so intense that you could feel the cold air coming out of the cell the, you know the temperature dropped 15 degrees we were getting stuff on the box saying kill him and all this wow. stuff and then he was shouting so loud that these two ladies actually heard him outside of Mansfield, outside of the outside of the solitary, outside the building. Holy and they cow! Came, and they came Those to see. Walls what was are really bit thick. Yeah. So they came in, and it died, died. So you wow. introduce different energy into something that's an energy bubble, and that's mm-hmm. the way I feel that, that that a lot of it works, you know. And you get, and I always say, like, and I learned it from Johnny: right person, right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. And it just, it just happens. Yeah. By the way, that's one of my mentors right there. When I grow yeah. up, I'm going to be like Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am very, very firm believer in that. Where you know, again, you have that that certain element, certain people, and mm-hmm. you're going to have activity galore. You could mm-hmm. have one per- person come in. It, and you know everything will flatline. I call those people neutralizers. Right. That that particular day, for some reason, every time I was around, everything would flatline and would neutralize. Mm-hmm. 
But normally that doesn't happen when I'm in a haunted location or something, but there are those times. But yeah. again, it, because with me, uh, PK is everything. Psychic kinetic energy. I that agree. Is the, I that's agree. the fundamental yeah. of everything and anything that occurs and happens with a lot. Well, uh, Tim, you and I have talked about that. Rap tap. Lily Dale was the first time I ever heard it or witnessed any of that. Yeah. A again, you know, it's uh, amazing to see and witness when that is legitimately occurring and happening. Mm -hmm. So It's, you know, I mean, it, 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 it is neat. And again, you know, I've learned, and the first thing that you learn when you're going to do like seance, true seance, where you're going to go and uh, uh, you're going to go and, and meet at the same time every week with the same people every week for months to build up uh, the energy to bring in for a physical phenomena. That's what, because that's basically what really what what your goal is in, in seance is to bring, it's not communication. It's to build for physical phenomena and mm -hmm. bring through communication as a secondary, as a secondary thing goal. But what happens is, is that sometimes you get together with people and it's just not right. Yeah. So you have to change the players. You mm -hmm. change the players around, you bring in different people and experiment for a while until you can get that right group of people. When that right group of people comes, it's unbelievable. When I was serving at a spiritualist church decades ago, uh, I uh, we we were we were doing seance, which we shouldn't have been doing because we were supposed to be studying for, you know, we were, we were supposed to be getting as a study, getting together as a study group that lasted about oh one session and then after that we started doing seance. You're so naughty. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> the way it works, you know. And not that I had anything to do with it, but you know, oh yeah, okay, you know. And I said, you know what we need? We need the we need to ask the tables to see if what's right and what's what what is bullshit in these in these books that we're learning. Right. <laughs> that was the end of it. That's just it just blew up after that. Mm. And but the thing that the big thing that I have found is that you know, we started off with like 16 people. And what happened was spirit started trimming it. As phenomena started to get more and more prevalent, people started kind of falling away. And those who were really into it, where they were really, we all were meshing together. Like, and we ended up with, out of 16, right? we ended up with six people at the very end. It was at that point where uh, we were starting to experience doors opening and, and mm. footsteps, the sounds and uh, uh, the, the uh, spirit trumpet voices coming through the spirit trumpet. We were starting to experience that. And then the blue hairs on the board found out about us and <laughs> whoosh, done. <laughs> you know, we were supposed to be studying, you know, that's not what we were supposed to be doing. Right. So, you know, Dang so, blue hairs. Yeah, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. But that's, you know, it's amazing when you get that right group of people at the right mm -hmm. location. The, the location was an actual spiritualist church from 1911. And it was, oh, it's wow. been in constant use since 1911. So wow. it has a lot, you know, it, it has that different type of vibe to it. Mm -hmm. And it just got to that point where we all meshed so deeply and so, uh, so closely that it really started to become on fire and that's, and it's, and it's hard to find a group to do that. So, you know, energies are different. People's energies are different. I know when uh, I do uh seance, uh, I don't know. That's called a closed seance. This, the open seance and Johnny knows is where you just get together and you do a seance someplace. I know that when you have the right people, I was just at Phelps at the Phelps store and apartments in uh, Palmyra, New York, home of Joseph Smith and uh, uh, you know, the Mormon religion. And Joe and John, by the way, I have Joseph Smith's death mask now in my collection. Oh. I have a copy of oh. it, and I found it in a co-op. I've been dying to tell oh. you. Oh my God, it's that's it's so freaking cool. Yep, that is I, so cool. The original, the original is in Utah, and this is one of the ones that because they made two, one of him and one of his brother. They were both killed at the same time in Nevo. Yeah. But I found it. I just found it. It was Providence. Wow. Spirit cool. took me right to it. I was like, oh, my God. And I, so I, cool. I was like, but it was there. It was just there. So I had to buy it. But anyway, uh, I was in Palmyra. 
And we had uh, uh, really the, the group that I work with. It's not even a group or a bunch of friends that get together once in a while. And we do these investigations and we just, you know, it's just fun. And that we bring the, we try to keep the fun with it. And we try to go and we try to, you know, just enjoy what we do. And so we did this seance in uh, the dining room of the, of these apartments and 90% of everything in these apartments in the store is original. So we're there and there was this heavy Oak table. I mean, this heavy Oak table, that thing started to vibrate and started to shake. Wow. It was the right people at the right time. It was exactly the right people at the right time. And, it was, and, 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 you know, when it happens, it's, it's unique. I think we could have got this really heavy oak table to move if we had been like working with it a couple times, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, everybody here, it, the, that place is about two hours away from here. So it's, you know, prohibitive to be able to go and do that once, you know, every second, you know, every, you know, once a week. But uh, it's, it's amazing when you get the right people together. You know, mm -hmm. it really is what, what can happen. And that's the one thing I learned as a kid when we used to do child's children's seance. And it would be in the bright light. It would be it would be in light. And all of a sudden when that trumpet would start to move or or the bell would tip over or you got a tap on the tambourine. Uh, it was it was it was really mind blowing. Yeah, and it was the right people at the right place mm -hmm. at the right time, mm -hmm. and that's what's that's 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 the bottom line. And Johnny will tell you the same thing when it comes to even negative hauntings. Right person at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. It yeah. all depends. I mean, it's a crapshoot, but when it happens, it happens, and that's yeah. there's no clear cut evidence, you know, no clear cut reason sometimes mm -hmm. for it, you know. Yeah. I mean, you can have people out there sacrificing, you know, bunny rabbits and, and nothing will happen to them, but you can have a nice person that's walking by and just get targeted. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, there's no, there's no, sometimes there's no real reason. It, a lot of it's just all energetic right. and the luck of the draw. True. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that really brought down the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm it. getting sad now. So my yeah, holiday everybody's depression sad. Is Everybody, now everybody's got like a little sad off. face on now. <laughs> No I sad. Saying, every here. time you said Palmyra, I was freaking out because I live in Palmyra, Wisconsin. Oh. And I'm going, what are you talking about? Why were you in my and then I go, it's New York. <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. If I was in if I was in your town, I would know because there's only would... 1,700 people in this. Oh, town. you would know. You would know. <laughs> I would know. Oh, yeah. Like, you would know. Like, Listen, Trouble you, would you, happen. I've had you would look out your town. front window and it would be a gospel van driving then and stopping in front of your house. And that's what we would be traveling in, just to let you know. If you see if you see an old van that says, you know, you know, revival, and then it's like you see like I'll somebody be going took spray the paint direction of that van. Anything that has <laughs> revival on it, adios. <laughs> oh no, it'd be it'd be it would be X'd out and there'd be like, you know. On the windows, there would be like decals of like Ouija boards and stuff. Let's go. Pentagrams. That always gets them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yeah, that, 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 that it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That it does. Yeah. Yeah. That it does. It you got it. But it does. Yeah. It does. I had, a, I had a tattoo guy say to me, you know what you need on your arm? You need a great looking pentagram. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, well, that would be the last time I serve any spiritualist church. Let me tell you, that would be the end of that would be that would be the end of my career going to, going yeah. to serving churches. No, I think I'll pass on that one. Thank yeah, you. Might you as well put it like on your, your long forehead, sleeves. Huh? <laughs> you know, yes. you go. Well, I wear. You know what's funny, Dana? I wear. You know, even though you know, I mean, I you you know, I've got tattoos, mm -hmm. and it's funny to this day. Uh, I wear if I'm doing gallery, it doesn't even have to be in a church. Uh, I'll wear long sleeves. Just and because that, that's how you that harkens see. back to the days mm -hmm. of of having respect. I mean, right. the, the the ladies in 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 my particular form of spiritualism, they all wear, you know, they all wear blue. I call them blue hair skirts because you know dresses <laughs> and skirts that go down just above your ankle. You know that that's what they wear when you know to serve. And I mean, when I was growing up, they all they all you know. Uh, uh, they ever all the guys wore suit coats or mm -hmm. you know at least a nice mm -hmm. shirt and a vest and they never ever ever showed anything on their on their on their forearms and because i'm tattooed i've got tattoos you know on the my inner forearms i i still to this day won't won't do it and it's just 
you know, we it's talk about tra- we talked about traditions. You know, it's just it's mm-hmm. funny. Nobody tells you to do it. You know, I mean, I I wouldn't get my hand mm-hmm. slapped or anything by for doing it, but for not doing it. But I just think it's uh it's just a tradition. I just like doing it like that. And besides, yeah. I look pretty swanky in a shirt now. I lost. <laughs> Oh, I've been, I've been, dude, I've been working out, baby. I've been working out. You know? yeah, I've, been, like, you know, I've been working out, here. man. I've been working out, man. I look pretty good now. In my, in, you do in, work. In my <laughs> shirt. Yeah, in my, in my mind, I look good. <laughs> I'm going to have to sign up for the gym so I can show my... My yeah, muscles. I'm just gonna like not I'm do in, that. Listen, I'm in <laughs> I'm in competition with Dustin Perry because he, oh, he's he's always posing. That's what I do now. That's why yeah. I pose in the gym. Like, <laughs> here, take that, Dustin. You know, at our age, we really should all do it because it keeps us again. Healthier. My holiday depression. You guys have done wonders for that today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I think that, you know, no, keeping active that. too and, and possibly working out, not that, you know, I'm promoting, but a little bit, but that helps with the, the whole sad and the depression. Oh, it does. Yes, it does. does. You know what? It's, Be- it's, it because stuck I, I suffer it. from, I, I, su- I suffer greatly. You guys know that from, from mm-hmm. anxiety. Mm-hmm. I have terrible anxiety. I have so bad before I do a talk or I even do gallery or anything, I could throw up. That's how bad mm-hmm. it was. This is the only, this year at, at Michigan was the first time I didn't feel that way because I didn't have time. <laughs> we, got, we got there and I was you 40. Didn't have time. I, right. I, was, I was there 45 minutes and I had to be on, you know, with, with right. I.C. Smith, you know. And you were exhausted. And exhausted. And I put on my, my damp clothes that got wet, you know, from the from, from the hailstorm. You smelled and... like a urinal cake. We were yes, I did. I that. smelled like a urinal cake, you know. <laughs> you know? I had I had enough to, I had enough time to wash my face, but I do suffer from anxiety. And uh, the last year uh, I had back to back surgeries, you know. I mean, I had that I had the uh, cornea transplant, which was very successful, mm-hmm. and I had my tenth bladder surgery. Uh to remove nodules before they turn into cancer or anything. So uh, I was beat up pretty good and my anxiety just went right through the roof. Mm -hmm. And I was so uh, deconditioned. I went to, I went on an investigation. I had to sit. I, you guys know me. I don't sit, you know, I love being an investigation. I had to sit. I was exhausted. I mean, I, I walking was tough. So I was so deconditioned. That's why I went back to the gym thinking that, you know, I'll just, I'll just go like twice a week. And now it's like, look at me now. It's like, that's insane. Like twice a week. I feel like I'm a slacker now. Yeah, but that's good. That's it's a good thing, but but it does. It helps for me. It helps. It helps my brain and Mm -hmm. it helps me be more focused and I'm able to, it's discipline and listen, I get into a really good thing with that. And then once I fall out, it's really hard for me to get back on the horse. Oh, it is. It is. And especially struggling with the horse. Well, at this time, listen, at this time of year, it's really tough because, you know, yeah. we are, because traditionally we're supposed to be happy people and right? eating and eating <clears throat> and eating everything. Yeah. And yep. I have that going on. Oh, it, it's tough. And it's, you know, and I mean, I'm a, I'm an insulin controlled diabetic <clears throat> on top mm-hmm. of it. So, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, there's nothing I would like better than to put my face into some hot fudge. Or uh, like sit there at a table and like just gorge myself on cookies, but you know I know I can't do it. And uh, you know the, the uh, for me <clears throat> the exercise has helped me two ways. I can say that the exercise helped me physically because everything mm-hmm. is really all my blood work and everything came back very well. Good. But uh, as a medium, I gotta say that I feel sharper. And I also, ha- and I say, I got, I, I got to say that I, I really feel that uh, I'm getting a little bit better communication skills. It's, you know, the other side, it's really coming through stronger. Uh, my focus is there. It's not so, uh, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not relying on the grocery, what they call grocery. Those of you who aren't psychics or mediums, the grocery list is something when you can't get anything. You go to it. It's like, oh, relationships, uh, money, you know, and okay, what what does everyone mean? Everything mean, you know, I don't have to rely on that anymore because it's coming through that strongly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I I guess it's good for me. Plus, on top of it, you know, I'm an old retired guy. So, I mean, what am I going to what what am I going to do? Walk through the mall 
No, that's not happening for me. You know. Hey, I, watch it! I do it. I, I know. Do I was, that. I was I'm waiting a long for it. <laughs> I I I'll walk with you, Johnny. I'm I'm good with that. I we walk, don't even I, have a mall here, but I walk through Walmart. <laughs> wait, wait! It gets too it gets too nasty out. I turn into a mall muffin. As as I look across here and in front of my spirit trumpets is my treadmill. You know, <laughs> when it gets bad. <laughs> I w- I knew you did, Johnny. I was waiting for. You. I was waiting for you. <laughs> did you really say a mall muffin? Yeah, that's what, I, I I laugh because I tell I rem- I can remember you know years back going look at all these old people walking around in the mall you know and I go oh man I turned into them yo know, I'm out there just trucking along trucking along walking through the mall you get to meet people you talk to people I go. Oh, I turned into a freaking old person. I can't believe it. I'm all muffin. I can't find no blue haired ladies. They don't make them anymore. I think we've got a couple in my town. <laughs> oh my god! I can remember that though. All these hair, all the old ladies oh. with the 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 blue yeah. hair. Yeah, the, with the yeah. blue yeah. hair, blue hair, blue rinse that they or whatever in. it was, and they thought that was oh the coolest god, freaking yes. thing, man. And it ranged oh. from like a lilac color to like. <laughs> oh. Oh, my chest hurts on that. Oh, my God. So for God. Christmas this year, I got exercise tips from Tim Shaw and the term mall muffin from Johnny's office. Because <laughs> I'm what using great that. Guess. That's perfect. I've perfect. never heard that term before. It's I so haven't good. either. Mall I'll muffin. never I'll never not know it's, that it, now. It's funny I'm because, like, what, you know what? It's funny because, you know, when I'm out and I'm, you know, we're all doing our thing, you know, and. I, I love people. I really do. You know, I'm one of the, I'm, I'm probably one of the, the most outgoing people you, you guys know how, you know, I listen, I think Johnny caught me talking to, talking to the, the urinal cake that one day, you know, I mean, I talked to anything, but so, where are you from? Yeah. Hey, you know, you know is, is there any action lately, you know, and um, oh, no. so, so, so I, uh, you know, uh, but, it, but it's funny because uh, when I go to the gym, it's like, First of all, I can't go to the gym at certain times because there's too many retirees there. Oh, wow. <laughs> there's too many retirees there because because they all got to talk. It's like, no, no, I got to get I got to get through this. No, 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 no. And so they all got to talk. So then like you, you can only go at certain times. So I'll go in there and I sneak in and it's like Oh no. Oh no. Here comes Mr. Coffee Clutch. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Don't see anybody. Don't see anybody. So no, Johnny, I I couldn't do the mall. I unless unless it was like one of the old malls around here where they're all dead and there's like six stores in the mall, so I could walk around there. Uh, no, have... our, ours are getting like that too, Tim. Yeah, here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very. So well, you'd be safe for being a, a mall muffin, Tim. Come on. <laughs> Get just love it. that. <laughs> listen, I, I, I want to be a mall. Listen, muffin. if I wear a crop top, it's more than a muffin. Let me tell you. <laughs> It's more like it's like it's more like a birthday cake or a mall yeah. loaf. It's a loaf. It's a loaf. It's beyond a muffin with me. A, mu- a muffin is like you know my Johnny might have one of the but my Johnny might be one of those mini muffins. You know me? Uh uh-uh. uh No, I'm I'm one of the I'm I'm a, I'm like a brand muffin, one of those big brown brand muffins. You know, it just kind of just hangs out. You know, like, you know that's the way that works. Oh, I saw Johnny what November. And yeah. he's looking pretty darn good. Kim, so that mall muffin Kim, stuff works. We have a comment that's kind of funny here. Uh-oh. Kim Lindsay Covington says, "My oh. next tattoo, mall muffin." <laughs> I can't. I, I thought that was such a. Face. I know, but I thought it was such a common thing because you know a lot of times I, I often say that when I'll be talking to somebody around here and they're familiar with that. But then anywhere else I start talking about, they're going, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Never a mall heard muffin. That. The old people. We walk around like the, in a trance, just walking up and down in the stores, walking up and down in the hallways. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Oh, and we look at each other and go, oh, you made it another day. All right, you're here. <laughs> Way to go, Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. 
Oh. Oh. That made think, my whole. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. You guys. See, this, have this is what happens when Johnny so and I get together. You know what? We were stuck. Like I say we were stuck in Detroit, and I think I was so blessed to have Johnny with me there because. I don't think I could have made it without him because the two of us did laugh a lot. That's the one. <laughs> Nothing else. You have to laugh. We were just saying that before the show too. With you everything gotta... going on, man, if if we can't laugh, we're in big trouble. Oh, definitely. Big trouble. Best thing in the best thing in the world uh, mm -hmm. is humor and laughing and joking because they, you know, even. I'm one of those again too, you know, when I get down or depressed or anything like that, my humor kicks in right away. Mm -hmm. But that's a, that, you know, a lot of people have that mechanism yep. to do that. And, you know, again, it's a, a, a cool thing, but, you know, again, um, ever since uh, we all got shut in and everything, the, from COVID and everything, yeah. I start I start taking my happy pills. I'm not stopping. I like my happy pills. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Heck yeah. <laughs> I take mine too. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Uh -uh. <laughs> I, re I just rejected my prescription. Just to let you guys know. <laughs> well, mine aren't prescribed. <laughs> oh, but they're legal. So, it's all oh, bad. you're in a legal state, aren't you? I am in a legal state. <laughs> I am not. Go. My gummies are my happy pills and my pain pills and my yeah, they're just great. Nothing and, wrong with and, that. And they're good for you, right? Yes, they are. Mind, body, and soul. I'd comment on that, but it's illegal in my state. Oh, okay. So we so won't talk about that. Feminine. You notice you I'm know. not saying a word. I'm just <laughs> you're smiling. You're just sitting there smiling. <laughs> I'm just Great. high on Somebody life, just baby. Says they're gonna start calling me Mildred now. <laughs> Fabulous. I shouldn't have used Mildred. that name before. <laughs> you hey, know, that's man. a good wait a minute. That's a good nickname for you. Mildred. Mildred the ball muffin at your service. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Could you imagine the calendar we could make with that? Wow. We got Dana walking. We could have Dana walking with a walker down the middle of the mall. I hope you don't we want could, to make any money off that. We could have Dana having coffee sitting there. I'm telling we you, have Dana to start a new business. Yeah, yeah, but what'll be even better is then I'll walk up to her and talk to her. She won't respond. And then I'll kick her walker right out from underneath her. <laughs> Oh, Johnny. And there'll be just Dana with a broken hip on the floor. They'll be called the, co they'll be call the cops and say they escaped from the freaking old people's house. Come get them. They got out. <laughs> they bring the short bus. Yeah. The <laughs> on the the loose. Get them in there. Uh, I'm sure everybody that wanted to hear holiday stories, you got maybe two. So, sorry is about anybody that, disappointed? We did not. I mean, we never know where the show is going to go, which is why we're like, get real because yeah. I can't be fake. On that's that's the beauty uh, of the it's get boring. real. And, with you Deb asked, and, and you asked us to come on. That was a mistake. You should, I said no. to Deb, I you said, should have known right away. Why don't we have guests for Christmas? And she said. <laughs> Zaphis and I said Shaw and we perfect one of us contacted one of you and then boom it happened so it was a luck of the draw day perfect combo and then I tell Dana about the elevator the elevator and I'm like what and this ended up being like a, a half an hour conversation and a lot of laughter <laughs> and Dana making up songs and I'm multi-talented you don't know that about me <laughs> Listen, I heard you. I heard you in the morning in Gettysburg. I think we shared. I think we shared a table together in Gettysburg. Oh, that's recently. true. We did, didn't we? So yeah. yes, I, I I got to know Dana a little bit more than what most people know Dana. <laughs> I was pleasant. Isn't she lovely. Yes, you are. You're very pleasant. You're very pleasant. We we had a, a an event when at the hotel uh, was also a big gaggle of line dancers. And oh. Christians. And Christians from a different country. So there was all this religious Ooh. stuff. Then the line dancers. Line dancers. And then Goosebumps. the Kling Brothers <laughs> event the for Gettysburg. And was like, great. The line dancers were nice. They wanted us to come join. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. Oh, you sh I would have. I would have jumped right on that bad boy. <laughs> I'm sure it's really fun, but 
I don't know. Yes, he would have. Been yes, he would have. Since I've danced in a line. <laughs> but we all know Johnny will do things that nobody else will ever do. <laughs> it's one of the things we love about. I, I can't even comment on this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm being really good today. No, the fun, here. Here's the running joke. We're uh, one of the conferences. The um, Dana's. Um, what did we uh, at Gettysburg? What did you call oh, it? Phenomenology? Uh, phenomenology. Yeah, we oh. both, yeah. One year, my wife, uh, two of my sister-in-laws wanted to go. My I wife remember goes, them. Yeah, I yeah. remember that year. And my wife said, oh, okay, I'll go. Oh, your sisters are going, so you'll go. So I had all three of them with me. So oh, and, and we were downstairs, and we went into the bar, and I stood there, and all three of them were right there. And I go, before we even go in, I go, don't freak out. I Because a lot of the ladies will come over and grab me to go up on the dance floor. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we couldn't even order a drink, and I was already up on the dance floor with about <laughs> fifty different people, right? So I go back over to where my oh, two Uncle sisters- Johnny, Uncle Johnny, <laughs> oh my God, Uncle Johnny. So we go back over, and I remember that I'm standing there, and my wife's mm-hmm. laughing, looking at me, and my sister-in-law goes, "If you were my husband, I'd freaking kill you." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jack. Uh, I remember you were cutting uh, the rug on that one. Yeah, I remember those cut days. You were cutting the rug. <laughs> yeah, no, I bet. a few people oh, listening to the, tonight that were at the Gettysburg event, either the one you and I just were at, Tim, or the one you guys were talking about before. It's at the same hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Eisenhower. It? Yeah. Yep. Eisenhower. So, anyway, hi, everybody out there. Paula, Lisa, <laughs> Kim. Yeah. Whoever else. You're doing good at seeing that. My old eyes, I'm I'm trying to see it, and it's like I'll read it later. I do think I'm the youngest one on the screen. Just saying, sure. don't rub it <laughs> in. Not by much, yeah. but don't rub it in, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Thelma. <laughs> we're not. My bad. You notice Johnny and I are not even going. We're not even in this conversation. Nope. <laughs> nope. Both are very nope. smart men. <laughs> Yep, Paula. Yes, oh Paula. Gosh. I didn't mean to miss you if I did. She just called me yeah. Mildred. I'm doomed. I'm oh, doomed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I but, do but too. I, if it, I don't know. It's a bad. It's a bad. Mildred the Mole Muffin. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come we see me at my gallery. <laughs> there you go. I'm serious. Put that in your next yeah. advertisement, and people will go. We got to go see what this is all about. Who is this small muffin lady. <laughs> and bring a Wait big basket. Oh, I got it. I got it. Bring a big basket of muffins with you. You can bribe them with those. <laughs> no. Hey, anytime anybody does anything or says they take a muffin and just throw the muffin at them and say, "Okay, now you can have your reading." That's a token <laughs> off of Tim Shaw taught me that little Tim, bro- Tim, Tim, Tim just, candy at the people that are. I know, but Tim just sent that to me psychically to tell you. (laughs) The way it works. Oh, it's just like this. Oh, my God. He's like firing out. Somebody has to be sane here, right? No. Yes, Deb. Yeah, Deb. You you have to be. You almost have to be sane. No. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay. So we're not drinking. I'm okay with that. Oh, we're over, (laughs) But, but. These guys are probably wanting to go. Well, you, you want to go, or are you going to stay and talk to Mildred the Mall Muffin? <laughs> Tim did his own show beforehand, Black Cat Lounge. Oh, I just it's a great everything. show, and that's on every Wednesday night. Yes. At seven. Is it always on at seven, Tim? Yeah, we're on it. We I go on at seven o'clock uh, because, uh, like, I like to be in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock now. So you know. <laughs> You know, you, you know, yeah. you know us. You know us old people. You know, it's uh, you know. I have Johnny and I. Our nurses give us porridge before we go to bed, so we don't want <laughs> we want to make sure that we can we can have our porridge before we go to sleep. Little I can't even say what the straight face. Oh my! So it's like your bedtime. So, it, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to share with everybody before we call it? <laughs> A mall muffin night. A mall muffin night. <laughs> well, I'm going to be a mall muffin on. Uh, no, I'm going to be. I'm actually uh, going to be uh, uh, doing a gallery at the uh, Western Block. It's called Art Two Four Seven. It's a haunted place. Uh, we're going to oh. have a spirits with spirits uh, little celebration. Mm-hmm. We're going to have 
uh, wine tasting, and we're going to have Krampus coming. Krampus is going to be our special guest, and I'm going to do gallery, and people will be able to go through the place and and uh, 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 do a uh, private uh, ghost hunt there. So we're doing that awesome. on this on this Saturday, which is December 16th. And that will actually officially close off my 2023 season. So I'm actually I'm actually looking forward to doing it for two reasons. One, it's fun. Two, I'm done until fun and done. Fun well, and done. I was so, doing, uh, until until my cabin fever lecture series that actually starts in. I saw uh, you were doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do uh, once a month at uh, my friend's uh, store called Dragonfly Art and Soul. I've seen and, you advertise that. Yeah, once a, we're doing it once a month to get people out and uh, out of the house and and just do fun stuff and do fun talks and and learn different things metaphysically just to hang out with you know and and just you know stimulate stimulate people's you know interests and 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 keep them in the loop so that people don't nice. get it. and plus I'll be doing I don't know I'll do all sorts of other shit somewhere I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what <laughs> and I'm like Johnny you know what jo Johnny and I are the same way. Oh, no, I don't want to do anything. How much you paying? Okay, we're gone. Okay, we'll be there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, yeah, 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 you know, I like, you know, I really wanted to stay home this weekend, but the money was good. So we're going. Me and Johnny are on the road. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not the way we work. It really, it really isn't, but it does sound good. <laughs> I'm going to start practicing that. <laughs> oh, my cat is like in the active state of throwing up right now. Oh, nice. Yes, oh. I'm on the air, everyone. Yay. Your cat needs to go to the mall. Oh, poor little baby. Weakers oh. just released a muffin of his own. <laughs> oh, poor little baby. There you go. He's, he's, yeah. he's one of those cats. So yeah. sorry if you heard gagging in the background. I'm not hurting anyone in here. That was the cat. Yeah, I've heard that. It's your before. story, Dana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stick to it. I'm sticking to I it. I, I think I saw a movie like that once, but I'm not. I'm not going any further than that. <laughs> Quit blowing my cover, man. I don't, you know, I don't want to. You know, what 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 I learned in Gettysburg stays in Gettysburg. So. <laughs> I was. I'll call you later. <laughs> you were good. I gotta say, you were good. You were very very good. You're you were almost subdued. See, it can Dana? happen. I was. No, there was a lot going on there for me, you know, Gettysburg. I was, you know, I, I, I was a lot in. So, yeah. I love Gettysburg. Just, I, I just love hang it out down there. I just yeah. hang out. I just. I love know. Gettysburg. Well, I didn't intend on picking stuff up, but sometimes I can't not pick it up. So, yeah. yeah. I just, I just, I just go like this. I see. You. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Never did master yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, the emotional part is what's harder for me to to block off. But I've walked, I've walked the entire, just about the entire field. Mm -hmm. So all three days battle, I've been you know over the years since I've been you know. We're going so, back next year for sure. Yeah, I'm hope I, I'm hoping to be invited. Be on your way, Dana. I'm sure you will be. I'm hoping to be invited. I'm going yeah, whether that, I'm invited or not. <laughs> <laughs> I did, that's probably what I'll do. It doesn't matter to me. I, just, I have it's any, any excuse to get down. I am going to be, I, I will be at Remembrance Day. I'm going to be marching uh, in the uh, Remembrance Day parade down there in November. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's for sure. And uh, I may be doing, I'm I'm in the, I shouldn't say negotiation. I'm talking with uh, a friend of mine about doing a, a program down there. I, a couple of years ago, just before COVID, I was down there doing programs like a couple times a year for a mm -hmm. friend of mine who does tours. And uh, so we're looking at doing them again, see what happens. Never know. And maybe, you know, you never know. If the money's right, Johnny will be with me. You know what? You know what? You know what that means? Money's right. That means I'll show up again. It, it, it's like this, Johnny. I'll hey, show up hey, hey, we'll hey Johnny. Find them all. Johnny. Go. Johnny. I got. What? I got a six pack of beer. I got. I got. I got two Slim Jims and a pizza. <laughs> What do you think? Let's and, go. And, and Let's go. That's, that's all it takes. Let's that's go. All it takes. See, you know, <laughs> Johnny's on the go. road. <laughs> and I'll give you a bus fare. <laughs> you yeah, know, you got to live bus. while you're here, right? Yeah. That's it. How I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, but yeah, yeah. That's what, basically, that's that's what I'm doing. And then we got, again, the Black Hat Lounge will be, I've been, uh, uh, since since I took the summer off to recuperate, mm -hmm. uh, we've been working every like I say every Wednesday night. And my big I have I have a big thrust that I'm trying to do this year. Just 
uh, I have so many people that are in the holistic field that I know, and I love working with them. They're a bunch of great healers, and they do all sorts of modalities and that sort of stuff. So I'm trying to bring on one a week or one a month so that we can go and I can go and, and showcase what they do and, and talk about the different, you know, the different ways and, and the, the different, uh, uh, you know, the different things that uh, uh, they've been experiencing. So uh, it's just, just something that's fun. <clears throat> and and nice. almost and almost you know intellectual and it needs to be out there yeah it really does i really i really think it is because too much of it is you know johnny will agree with me the the paranormal fad has you know has really saturated the the market and there are really i can uh, i can attest to a lot of the healing that i've gotten over the years especially you know I don't even have to thank you, Debbie, because you know, Deb, you you were one of the big ones that used to send me so much. Every time, I, every you know what, I could always tell Deb was thinking about me every time I went in for surgery. I, I just to God, because every time I went into surgery, it, it was like I'd be, I'd be, they, they'd be, uh, I'd be half juiced up, getting ready to go under, and it'd be like I think it, it was funny because I think out of ten surgeries, probably eight of them, I always remembered when when Deb was, you know, Deb would be, I'm okay. What time you, what time you going for surgery? Okay, and she would. Send yeah. that healing. I always knew you I could always feel the difference. And it was and actually, and right. because of that, my recovery times were always a lot less. So yeah. instead of like three, four weeks, I was two weeks mm -hmm. and ready to go. So I always knew it worked. So that's why I want to go and showcase that stuff. Yeah. Because personally, for work. me, it mm -hmm. really has helped me in the long run. Yeah, well, you did you heard my story at the beginning. Dana with the attitude problem ended up getting helped. So I can't have that attitude problem anymore. Right. See. It, it wasn't that I don't believe it. I just didn't believe it. Does that hey, make well, sense? Hey, you, I would like to have seen I the never nurses. I experienced it enough to really. I, 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 wanted, I would love to have seen the right nurses' way. faces when I was discharged. And they started to strip the bed and they started finding amethyst crystals <laughs> underneath the mattress. You know, under, because I used to load it up when I'd be laying there and they'd be put them in there. I would love to see their faces. Like, what is this shit? You know? And it's like voodoo, you know? I could just I could just imagine Damn like spiritualists. I couldn't find them. like I remember it's like I was in a hurry to leave so I couldn't find all the crystals, you know, mm -hmm. wherever they were. So, yeah, it's okay. a tip. It's a tip. It happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it does fit right in with the paranormal. You know, people don't believe it until they experience it. Once you that's experience it, exactly. you feel it, you live it, it's there. It's, it's also you. it's also UFO, you know, contactees and all that. Because oh, yeah. so many people, and I mean, I don't have to, I preach to the choir here because, you know, so many people, unless they have had a momentous, you know, experience, they're, it's just like, well, whatever. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't get that. And, you know, and it worked. And, and the problem is, is that we're so fractionated, right, Johnny? We're so fractionated with UFO people, paranormal, oh, yeah, holistic, you know, and it's, and there's, and, you know, and pe people don't realize, yeah, exactly. Everything is interconnected because how many, how many experiencers either have worked in the holistic fields or are, you know, are, have have had paranormal experiences, so mm -hmm. everything is everything and is interconnected. Experiences, exactly. Yeah. People, stuff that people. I do, I don't. I I just got done having this discussion with Dub. I don't know a couple podcasts ago. No, it was at UFOCon. I'm a medical intuitive, or that's what the they tag me with. I don't know if I whatever. Yeah, what? But yeah, I don't yeah. think when I get that kind of information, I don't think it's coming from my other information it feels separate from that am i going to sit here no. and say it's aliens no am i thinking it could be maybe because it doesn't feel the same it's a different it's a different thing and it's also pretty spot on which i'm not bragging because it's really not me right it's coming from somewhere else but that it's almost so targeted i don't know that stuff like as a human exactly. being exactly yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, and so if, unless I'm talking to be. like a bone doctor or a cardiologist on the other side, I don't know how that's coming through. But that's always been common, like with spiritualists, especially healers, mm -hmm. because they would have no knowledge of anatomy or, yeah. or, or medical, and they would come through. Look at Edgar Casey. Yeah, all good that example. would come through through Edgar Casey. Exactly. Right. So I mean, yeah, people don't people yeah. don't really understand that, and 
you know, I, I think that's one of the biggest problems that we have with what we with what we're doing is that we're so fraction. You know, the, the mm-hmm. we're just just I, I I made up a word called fractionation, and that's the best <laughs> word that. And the reason I use that is because of the fact that we are so separate. And God help anybody that goes and passes, you know, from one side to the other. And you know, that's and the, and the more that I've worked. It's not, I, I'm a firm believer that, uh, there, you know, that there is divine, we, you know, we can, we can tap into Akashic records, we can tap in, but there's also something else out there and there's, and people mm-hmm. keep missing that. And I, you know, I, I, if you're going to be a truth seeker, which we, all four of us are, if you want to be a truth seeker, you have to be able to be open to it. And you throw the mm-hmm. cryptos in cryptos. That's again, that's a, somebody else, you know, again, you know, paranormal UFO. And crypto and cryptozoology all all walk all work hand in hand together because I think Stan Gordon Stan Gordon compiled a book just of combined experiences and instances that happened only in Pennsylvania and it's a book. Yeah. So you know what? You tell me, you tell me, you know, that there's you know, UF that 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 everything is separate. It's not, it's not, and that's what's so great about uh one of the main reasons why I want to bring the holistic people in because of the fact that I want to be able to go and open people's minds up to the fact that, you know, if you work with the paranormal, the possibilities of a holistic healer of, of, you know, someone who is, you know, can work with chakras and, and, you know, they may be all on the same level. I just had this conversation about attachments. And I asked the lady, I said, geez, how did you get rid of the attachment? I went to a Reiki healer. Oh, my God. Is that blasphemy for paranormal? Sometimes it is. <laughs> At but the end of the be. day, none be. of us know right. what's going on. I agree. It shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. I agree. It, it is so all in None of us know really, like, the, you know, the different camps and everybody thinks they're right, which mm-hmm. it, it can't be because we don't know what any of this means. No, we know there's certain things that do certain, you know, obviously there's study on it, but at the end of the day, nobody knows. Nobody knows. So until no, they no, do no. Me- Johnny knows. Johnny's quiet. So he's Johnny knows. He's not, know. he's not telling it's anybody. Possible he could know. So we'll pretend you know, I, I don't know, know why everybody thinks that everybody says, you know, you know, you know, it all, you know, what's going on. And I go, no, I don't know any more than you do. And that's we all that look up to you. Yeah. I so mean, yeah, I can't say anything. There that preach like they are the, they are, it's almost like a cult behavior. It's yeah. like, this is the way it's like, no, it's mm-hmm. not. Cause you don't even know what you're talking about. You hey, know, I sat, I sat thing. out one night on uh, looking for the Loch Ness monster all night long. Ed came to pick us up in the morning, woke us up. He goes, did you see it? And I went, no. And he started laughing. So I mean, you know, I, I don't rule anything out either. <laughs> I just can't. don't. Cause you just you, don't know. And that's no. like what I try to tell but, a lot of people is, yeah. you know, if somebody's really in your face and really coming at you with a belief or a system, or if someone's trying to sell you something of a certain thing, like hardcore, and they say they're the 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 expert, for instance, eh, that's a big red flag to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't you know, like uh, anybody coming at me and forcing things at me. It doesn't work. Right. I just it just doesn't you work shut, with me. I shut right down to that. Yeah, I I will too. I'll shut down with those types of situations, you mm-hmm. know, again, you want to sit and talk, have an open conversation, you know, as Tim was just talking and saying, he'd love to see everything, you know, integrate in and, and everybody get along. It'll never happen. Unfortunately, right. it just won't. Ego. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's, it is. so much yeah. more could get accomplished. So mm-hmm. much more could, you know, be understood if this one, you know, again, but I don't know. It's just the way it is. But me, I, I last year, or no, two years ago, I think it was my first time I ever did a UFO convention. And I was like, you know, how am I going to fit in with that? It's amazing you know, I, how you do, isn't it? I loved it. I had yeah. a blast. And, you know, we were, when I got up and I started speaking about stuff and just talking about how we can, you know, compare the stories how they parallel with abductees and you know Mm -hmm. some of these different things they parallel everybody was sitting there going this is an oddity for 
a paranormal researcher to say what you're saying. Yep. Right. And I go, but that's the way I look at it. That's just the way I do. You know, I haven't seen any little green people yet, but you, you know. haven't been to Buffalo enough. That's all. <laughs> 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 there's a couple there's a couple places downtown I can take you, Johnny. <laughs> no, you got too, you got too much snow up there already, don't you? No, I got no snow whatsoever. We have no, no snow in Wisconsin either. Yeah. This oh, is, okay. I don't year, I don't have snow. Last year at this time I had uh we're a bunch we had, of losers uh, uh, up seven, here in the north. <laughs> yeah, seven foot drifts in front of my house. And uh Ooh. you know, I had to, I had to have friends come over and, and plow me out to, because of I remember surgery. that. I remember so, that. Yeah, yeah, so I mean we were I remember because yeah. you called. You called to check yeah. up on me, yeah. and yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. But you know, it's so funny that people are. They're just become so myopic about things, and I mean, with me, it's like I, 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 I just can't. I can't conceive of that because mm -hmm. uh, I've just got such a wide interest in everything, and you know, and people really fascinate me. I got. You know what? It was hysterical. I so I I did a I did a uh, um, I did a, a, a charity gallery reading up in at Palmyra, and uh, not mine, not yours. But <laughs> they put me up at a bed and breakfast, and the other people that were there were all Mormon. They were all Mormon. So it was Sunday morning. I get up and get up and you know you know me you know I got tattoos. I got a t shirt on. You know I'm getting ready to go home. You know basically after breakfast, and everybody is all dressed up Sunday best Sunday best. Oh Do you know what? I thought it was the most fascinating thing in the world, watching them and talking to them. They don't drink coffee. They have hot chocolate, nothing with caffeine. They do this I'd, and this. I'd never make it as a morning. Oh, oh no, it was, it was, I'm just telling you, it was great. I thought it was one of the most fascinating things, but you know, I, I showed him a lot of respect and like, you know, the patriarch of the family, the grandpa, I mean, he thought he was great because we were talking. And all of a sudden, the stuff that he's talking about was like, wow, th that's like interesting because, you know, the Mormon religion talks, does talk about extraterrestrials and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even with whether or not Joseph Smith wrote the uh, the Book of the Mormon or the Angel Moroni dropped it off down on Hill Cumorah, doesn't make a difference. Uh, it's the fact that they do touch on that. And I thought that was really fascinating. And he actually, mm -hmm. you know, he, they, when they introduced me, you know, they, you know, I, you know, I was introduced for what I do. And uh, he talked about that. And he asked me about that. And and I said to him, I said, I, I, I got to agree with you. I mean, I can't, I can't disagree with you. I, I think it's, everything is possible. Of course, I didn't tell my head Joseph Smith death mask because, you know. I was just going to say, didn't you just buy his death mask? <laughs> I didn't tell him. Sometimes it's best to be quiet. True. But uh, it was really fascinating to be able to go and, and get that different point of view, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that to me is what's what's interesting. I had a Pentecostal that I used to work with. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to work with him. He was a pain in the ass. Preached constantly. So every time I did something bad, not that I would do anything bad at work, aggravate the bosses or whatever, because I could, uh, they would assign him to me. So... I would look and I would check to see who I was working with the next day. And when I found out I had him, I would go and get a Bible verse and I would study it. I would read it and study it. And we'd be, you know, driving and I'd be driving, you know, pulling a roller behind me and everything. And he'd be talking and he'd start up, you know, usually caught, usually it was like 15 minutes into the morning. He would start up talking about, you know, religion. I would whack him with that Bible verse. He would talk about it for the whole day. It was great. Oh it was great. Because I kept his mouth busy. He was so busy <laughs> talking about it. And then I would go, you know what? I don't understand this. And then that was even better because he would go, it was a great day. He's People testifying. Were going, <laughs> yeah. He was like, how, how do you stand? He said, man because into a religious experience. It was great. It was great because you learned something, you know. And you learned something from somebody that actually, you know, 100% believed it and knew what he was talking about. Right. So, I mean, that was, that was, that was phenomenal. And then before I left, he's always going, I got to ask you, are you a witch? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe I could What's be. What's your know. definition of witch? <laughs> you know, I I have been known to run around naked in the moonlight, but that's you know that's just normal with my old neighborhood. You know, <laughs> he's, a, he's a woods muffin. <laughs> oh my god, woods muffin! 
<laughs> oh, Tim, that's it. That's your Better call, fire uh, muffin. Uh, uh, we're Ball calling muffin? Them. Woods muffin. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See what you've started now. Yep. Uh, this is and what happens. Muffin. I warned you. I, I warned you. you. Mildred Mall Muffin. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I warned you guys. Put, put Johnny and me in the same in in the, in the same communication. It's, it's yeah. it can be uh That's it could hilarious. be kind of strange. Kind of I strange. should have learned that in the elevator, right? <laughs> <laughs> All the signs were there, Deb. All the signs were there. Sense. Who can say they were in an elevator with these two? I mean, come on, Deb. That's a great well, story. And literally, it's how we met. And from one floor to another, I don't know what happened. I think we had missing time. I think I we think, had missing yes, time. Yes, I think we were abducted. Because afterwards, it was like, you know, Tim comes running up to me like an hour later and picks me up in the hallway. Hey, there you are. How you doing? Literally <laughs> lifting me up in the air. So, I mean, we've been just great friends. There was some kind of abduction that happened in the <laughs> elevator that bonded I, us. I, don't, I don't know about you, Johnny, but that anal probe was okay. I mean, it was, it was all right. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Uh, I mean, at this point at this uh, point in my life, you uh, know, you go to the urologist, you always get something interesting. So, you know, oh, by yeah, that, you do whatever. for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing one character here right now, Andrea Baron. Oh, Where no. is she? she was, Where? You know, she wasn't there yet that year. I think oh. Andrea's first year was the year after Tim's first year. Oh my God, Johnny, you Andrea! And I are the Andrea, folks. Roger, Roger, I could have been your son-in-law. Oh no, <laughs> Roger! Oh my God, no, no! Uh, yes, oh, yes, God. Yes. oh my God! So, so uh, we'll have to have Andrea on sometime too, with yeah. us, yep. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we will. That'll yeah, be coming yeah. soon. I'm, I'm afraid sure. already. I'm afraid. Be. <laughs> I'm afraid you already. I, I'm going to be on Andrea's show Friday night, and uh, it's always a little frightening. Did I ever tell you my my Andrea story about him and about her and my my friend Frank? No. So Frank, my friend Frank, is a retired CEO, right? He's a bodybuilder. He's actually like my, my trainer, you know. Right. And Snug muffin, if you will. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah, he is. He, he's hot. Yeah, though that he's yeah, yeah he's he's. I'm, listen, I wish I I wish I had a quarter of like him in me. You know, it's like I, that doesn't sound right. So we'll talk about that. That, that, that definitely doesn't sound right. <laughs> right after the anal probing, I don't know. Uh, I'm I will have two of those worried. please to go. But uh, anyway, anyway. Oh, dear. So I said to him, I said, "Listen, I said you're going up to Conjuring, right?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah." I said. Would you like to talk to Andrea Perrin, the, the lady who wrote the books that the movies are based on? He goes, you know her? I said, yeah. I said, I, you know, I know her. I said, I got, his, I got her number. I said, if you want, I'll text her and I'll connect you guys up. So one thing leads to another and they, they talk and, you know, well, Frank sees her at an event, Right. And Frank is what six, like six foot three, and he's huge. He's just, you know, he's a monster. And he's walking up to her. After that, it was love at first sight. So they're on, so she's on my show. So she's on my show, and Frank comes in the room. You know what? It's just like this show. Throw the whole format right out because it was just, yeah, no, forgive me for oh, saying yeah. this, but he felt like a brick shit house. Oh my. <laughs> and he just, she just kept going. <laughs> He goes, he says to me later, my wife was listening to me. <laughs> is this is this what you do at these events? And I said, I just started laughing. I've got, oh my God, she is a character, but she 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 just he comes in and she just she, she just she just all everything's out the window, you know. For, forget it. There's nobody, there's nobody else around. She she's right. just she could be signing, she could be signing books, and it's like gone, go away. Here comes Frank. <laughs> Is this what you do at these events? Well, not the people you were talking about, probably, but <laughs> right. yeah. there's a lot that goes on at those events. Oh, oh, oh. I am oh, assuming oh. he will now be at all of them. Ja uh, Frankie? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, because I'm going to be honest with you, after the Detroit thing coming home, I missed my flight by three minutes. <sighs> and I got stuck in New York City. 
and yeah. it was it was tough. It was brutal. So from here on in, I'm driving. Mm-hmm. I'm I driving. A lot of people are saying that now. I can't. I. You know what? I. It's ten o'clock at night in LaGuardia Airport. They closed mm-hmm. the airport yeah. down. You can't stay. You got to go. Mm-hmm. I had the kindest guy in the world come up and help me and get me a room you know at airline at the airline rate and uh the kind he was just because he he must i must have looked totally like <laughs> i must i must have looked like i was like delusional by Could this cry? point yeah. oh my god yeah i was just like oh my god no it's already <laughs> late at night and uh i i just said you know what at this point it's i don't it's not worth the stress and uh, for me to drive from here, from my house up to the farthest point would be Sault Ste. Marie is 10 and a half hours. Mm-hmm. You know what? And, you and can stop at Houghton Lake. And I'm th- well, we're, take a break. well, we're going to be, we're going to be figuring so we're going to be figuring out an itinerary because he's, uh, he's going to be in Toledo with me and he's going to be at Mansfield with me. He may be up in, he may be up in Virginia with me too. So uh, we're trying to we're trying to get an itinerary together so that uh, he can he can be my official chauffeur. Nice. So it's like, and it's nice, and you guys know it's nice to have somebody when you're on the road. Oh yeah. You know, and, I have my son. He carts me everywhere. He's yeah. my hero. He puts he's up amazing. With you. I love. Him. I have yeah, a he's great a, kid. He's a I great do. guy. He really, you know what, seriously, your kid, your kid is just a nice kid. I mean, really, really, it's like, you know, I mean, he gives it to you, but I mean, it's it's like in a nice way, (laughs) you know, (laughs) he's got my sense of humor, (laughs) which scares me. (laughs) And he gets good hugs. He's a good kid. I'm I'm very very lucky because it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, part of it was me, but not lots of that nature versus nurture on that one. I'm lucky. He's a good kid. So he'll kill yeah, me now because I said that on the oh, air. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You suck. How's that? I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever bring him again. He's terrible. <clears throat> but yeah, so Frank is going to be doing a lot of, he's going to be traveling with me a lot this year, just to, oh, or cool. next year, just to, you know, get out there. And uh, he's got a, he's got, he's got a lot of stuff in the, in, you know, that he's working with and what he's supporting and what he's promoting. So it'll, it'll work out good. It'll be a, it'll be, it'll be a fun time. <clears throat> and Frank and I, you know what? When we get together, the radio never comes on. It can be 12, 15 hours. Those our voices I'm are sure. hoarse by the time by the time mm-hmm. we're done. So. I'm sure. Yeah. It's like for, yeah. it's like it's like this guy here. This guy here. We never I shut up. Heard. John, John, when did we come up for air? I think, oh, I know when we came up for air. When that we went sounds to, terrible too. What, <laughs> man's gotta have a hobby. What can I tell you? Long, <laughs> long days. We were getting lonely, him and I. <laughs> But there was no place. There was no place to eat. We finally found a Chick Fil A. Remember, and all oh, they had, right. and all they had, what was up on the grill. That was it. There was no other food left, and nothing was there. And I think that's at the only time something. that you and I stopped talking up until when we collapsed at the, at uh, the gate. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, yeah, I mean, we didn't stop. I still <laughs> never understood that. I. It, they shut everything down in the airport. All the restaurants, everything just shut down. Everybody they could, left. They couldn't get any help in. Yeah. There was no, yeah. all the underpasses were full. I know. Well, Dustin, was, was, he was in that, he, he got stuck in the shuttle for two and a half hours until the water receded enough that they could drive out of the airport to get to the, uh, to get to the, the to get, pick up that, uh, your vehicle. So, it reminds I mean, me that, of an Armageddon movie. It was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it really was. does. Like all was, the weather and the flooding and the, the hell no, no. You know what it reminds me of a really. You know what you know what it reminds me of a really bad joke. A, a psychic, a demonologist, and a whole bunch of paranormal people got stuck <laughs> in an airport. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like a Stephen King novel. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh yeah. Or, or a Twilight Zone yeah. episode. And who was and Very who was the only fun. and who was the one that didn't make it out? Although everybody else came and they weren't hungry when they when they were found, you know. So that's basically what it was like. It was it was it was getting cannibalistic there for a while. I don't know. I had a I don't know. I had a bagel tucked in my uh, in in my in my pack, and there were some people starting to sniff around. I think they smelled my bagel. <laughs> I had that in my emergency. Somebody smell a bagel. Oh, <laughs> oh. 
Well, oh, my gosh. The, the sad oh. part is it's not, it's not far from the truth. Johnny will tell you I, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I Everything. never got why they, they shut down, like, the restaurants and stuff. But what really gets me about airports is they don't let you stay there when they've stranded you. Yeah. Right. Why are they kicking you out of the airport when you are, like, in the midst of a, going somewhere mm. and all the hotels are full? I knew because I was in trouble. It's never when, made sense to me. I knew I was in trouble when the guy said to me, "Do you have any place to stay? Do you do you have do you know anybody here in New York City?" Oh yeah, let me just ring up, you know, Bet no. Miller or somebody. <laughs> no, I'm sitting out. I'm sitting outside. <clears throat> I think I was afraid when I was sitting outside because I thought it was. I thought like I was. People are going to say I'm a hobo sitting out there. I was a homeless guy. <laughs> that's what it was like. I mean, that's yeah. what it was like. It got to that point. You know, and, and luckily this this gentleman found, you know, was, you know, that worked for Delta actually came and said, hey, you know, here, let me, you know, I can't get you a comp, but, and got I got uh, taken to a uh, place that was uh, actually pretty nice. It looked like a loading dock when I got out and I was kind of afraid that I was going to wake up with only one kidney, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that I'm not kidding you. That's what it looked like. It That's looked like, funny, you know, I... from... It was like it was like the, a window from a uh, like the door it was like a uh, broken door from like a Seven Eleven. That's what it looked like as you walk in, but everything was all marble. It was beautiful when you got in there, but it was like I had I had my doubts, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, I can live with one kidney. What the, what's the worst that could happen, you know? <laughs> all right, guys, it's ten o'clock. I'm gonna wrap yeah. up here. Yep. Yeah. All anything, right, every... John, do you have anything coming up that you want to talk about before you go? Uh, actually, a break. <laughs> I'm taking a break. Yeah, and he's yeah. got to go to bed. I, We're like, yeah, yeah, so that, I man. I go back doing a few things in January. Back with the, but I'm still doing a few investigations here and there. But okay. going back out in the road, not till January, towards the end of January. So, well, uh, thank you, thank you. All right, thank guys, thanks for guys. good to well. see everybody. Let's Christmas. do it again. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas, Happy ho, New ho, Year, ho. To everybody. Love all right. you all have a great night. Thanks, Take everybody. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.